Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is linear algebra. Today I would like to talk about the spectral theorem in linear algebra, which is a, a really good and pretty old theorem um, in linear algebra about the spectrum of a matrix. The spectrum of a matrix is nothing else than the collection of its eigenvalues, counted with multiplicity sometimes. Um, so let's just jump right into it. So whenever you have a some matrix. Let's say our matrices today have either real or complex entries. Um, what you usually would do is if you calculate eigenvalues, you would need to solve an equation. Um, but you need to solve an equation and the equation is you want to find the roots of the characteristic polynomial. The coefficients of the characteristic polynomial are, well, depends a bit, right? Either real or complex numbers, but in the end, um, the roots are certainly almost all of the time complex numbers. So here on the right hand side, you have a, um, a picture how usually the spectrum, the set of eigenvalues of a matrix looks like. So it's a very easy plot. So here's my complex plane or which you can identify with R2. Same on the right hand side, of course. And I just plot the uh, the the coordinates of, of R2, of the corresponding eigenvalues. So you can see here, for example, for, for the matrix at the bottom, you have uh, two real eigenvalues and the rest is. The rest are really imaginary eigenvalues. They, they are not real. And you don't, you shouldn't look too much at the matrix here at the bottom. It, it's a matrix I created using random integers from minus nine to nine, a 10 by 10 matrix. So if you just plot a, the spectrum of a 10 by 10 matrix with kind of random entries, of course, there will be complex eigenvalues. Just, just as I said again, what you need to do is you would need to calculate the characteristic polynomial and to check what its roots are. And it's super unlikely that you will end up with, with only real eigenvalues. But then I did the following. I also constructed a random matrix. But it's not completely random, so this matrix actually um, is symmetric, which just means it's its own transpose. In other words, along the diagonal, you allow whatever you want, and whatever is upstairs is reflected downstairs. This is just symmetric. Uh, otherwise, it's again basically random integer entries from my, uh, from this from minus nine to nine, and. Well, then you plot the spectrum and you will see that everything here just is real. So all eigenvalues are real. And this just can't be a coincidence anymore because, well, you have just constructed, uh, you just looked at the eigenvalues of a basically random matrix. So the only obstruction you had is that it's symmetric. Hmm. That's already a good hint that something is going on. Then you might play uh, a little bit more like down here, I basically played the same trick. I have two matrices, a red one and a green one. And now the entries are even worse. They are kind of random complex numbers. And there's just, there's just no way. There's just no way that, that you don't end up with some reasonably crazy looking pattern. Again, the same, the same thing you have C here or R2, whatever you want. And you plot the eigenvalues and they, 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 I mean, it looks pretty crazy. On the right hand side, I have this funny condition, which is called the complex transpose. So actually, the matrix is as before, is something on the diagonal, just real entries on the diagonal, which comes from a condition of, of being its own complex transpose. Some matrix upstairs here, and not quite the same matrix downstairs here, but you need to take the complex one again. So, in, in contrast to the real case where you just have AA, which I call symmetric, in the complex case, you have a and a bar. So taking the complex conjugate, you create a random matrix again, the green one. And as you can see, the green one has really nice eigenvalues in the sense that they're all real. I mean, this just can't go, can't be a coincidence, right? You have a 10 by 10 matrix. And basically, your entries are real. The only obstruction you added is exactly this one here, right? So this can't be a coincidence. And this will be exactly the statement of the spectral theorem. Spectral theorem is actually a little bit better, so let's look at that. 
Um, so here I have, well, let's go back to the real case. So we are back to the real case. There's something similar in the complex case. I just can't make such nice plots anymore. So I have two symmetric matrices, uh, M and M prime, whatever. And they're certainly symmetric. As you can see, there's something on the diagonal and you have a symmetry by flipping along the diagonal. And I just plotted basically um, their action on, on this is R2. Uh, this is of course also R2. I basically plotted the action on R2. And as you, so here are the eigenvalues. You can, uh, the eigenvectors, you can see the eigenvectors. So here's an eigenvector as you can see, a green one. And similarly here is an eigenvector, which is something that is fixed, right? So in, in this picture, it, it, it's always easy to see something that is fixed. There's also a blue one, which is roughly here. Uh, blue one, <laughs> a red one, which is roughly here. here. It's a bit harder to see, but it's roughly here. Uh, so along those lines, you have the eigenvectors. You have two of them. And you, you not just have two of them, which is really good because this basically means it should be diagonalizable to linear independent and eigenvectors. Um, but they are also certainly orthogonal to one another, which is very surprising uh, because I basically again took well, now two by two matrices because otherwise I would need to plot you in R, R to the 10 and I don't know how to do that. But anyway, the basically random entries and the only obstruction I had is I want to be, them to be similar, symmetric. So what have you seen? Okay, we have seen. Um, so let's ignore the complex case for the, for the moment. It's, it's a similar, but you need to take the complex conjugate. So if you have a real matrix, which is symmetric, you get real eigenvalues. And apparently you also get uh, orthogonal eigenvectors. And that's exactly what the, um, what the theorem says, the spectral theorem. So if you have an Amichian operator, which, which is, it, is just symmetric in the case you have R to the N, don't worry too much about the terminology and it's um, conjugate transpose, uh, in case um, uh, you are C to the N. And then the point is, well, first of all, M is diagonalizable with only real entries, but not just that. So all eigenvalues are real and you have an orthon orthogonal basis of B, which is actually orthonormal, consisting of eigenvectors, so of A. So what do we have just seen? You can't see in these pictures that they are actually orthonormal, but you have to you have to you have to normalize them anyway. Um, anyway, and this also generalizes to infinite dimensional spaces. I'm not going to do that. But anyway, so this is a really really basic and powerful theorem of linear algebra, which, as I said, generalizes like to infinite dimensional vector spaces. You can see it in functional analysis, like linear algebra of infinite dimensional vector spaces. That's basically what functional analysis is. And it's a really, really easy statement. It's, you look at a matrix, it's symmetric or, or whatever, this Hermitian property. Um, and all eigenvectors are real, uh, eigenvalues are real and eigenvectors form an orthonormal basis, which is, which is pretty, pretty amazing because why should any kind of real symmetric matrix satisfy that? Um, so that's a spectral theorem. It tells you something about the spectrum of Hermitian in general, or let's say symmetric matrices. And actually it's pretty nice um, because everything kind of happens continuously. So here's a plot of a symmetric matrix, which I will vary in a second in the video. So I have three entries, I have an A entry, and A is minus 10. I have a B entry, and in this picture here, B is zero and I have a C entry and C is 10. So B equals zero means this is a diagonal matrix and you should see um, the, well, uh, the coordinate axis is eigenvectors and yes, here you go. So this is one eigen axis and there's another one. And I will now vary this picture continuously in um, the entries A, B, C. And you will see that, that Every, it's really beautiful. So you will see that um, the angles always be, be kind of preserved, not the angles. So it's, you always uh, have those two eigen axes 
which are in 90 degrees to one another. And as soon as you hit the B equals zero, you will ex exactly end up with such a picture like this, where the eigenvectors are actually the X and Y axes. It's a picture. Okay, here we go. So we have, as I said, I have ABC and I will vary them now uh, in this video. So let's, let's watch it. So as you can see, it varies very continuously and you can really see the coordinate axis moving the eigen axis. So if you vary B at one point, it will cross the X, Y case. That's when, when it's diagonal, but you can clearly see, and now I vary C and you can clearly see how everything kind of moves continuously. And you see pretty, also pretty clearly the corresponding eigen axis, which are always, which is like, like here right now. So it's pretty, it's pretty nice. Here's another one. And you vary it. So this can't be a coincidence, right? If you just look at this picture and you're now really varying A, B, C, D, it this just can't be a coincidence. And the theorem tells you it isn't. So this is kind of the, the standard case, the, the, the general behavior. Well, but that's it for today. So spectral theorem tells you something about um, eigenvalues of, let's say, symmetric matrices. They are all real. It's always diagonalizable and you always have an orthonormal basis consisting of eigenvectors, right? So those are the axes that you could, could see in, in the pictures. And it's actually a really powerful theorem, um, very applicable and generalizes to say infinite dimensional matrices. Okay, that's it. Hope to see you next time.